She's got a secret underneath Yeah, she's his naughty little freak She likes to put on a show She likes when he tastes good They're not going to get it done here today, but something to be said about the resilience of this Packers squad. It's very frustrating. We know what we're capable of in this locker room. We got to be better, and we will be better. Stuff that's very easily preventable, we kind of did to ourselves. Um, and really, that's on us. We got to look in the mirror. We got to hold ourselves to the standard we set at the beginning of camp, and that's the championship play style. And that wasn't us. Credit to them. They did more than we did to win the game, and we got to bounce back from it. We got to learn from it and, and get better. The Packers offense posted a season best 465 yards, with more than 300 of those yards coming in the second half. But turnovers and penalties proved insurmountable, leaving the Packers at 2 and 2. So, winning team. No matter what record we got, we just got to be better. Uh, the players, we got to be better, and we, we know that. And we're going we gonna to get back into the lab. We're going to look at the film, figure out what we need to correct, and then we're on to the next one. Green Bay learned a lot about the character of its football team, being down 28 zip in the first half, but showing no quit. Throws the right side, oh, leaping, grabs a touchdown! The game ain't over till. You know, zeros are on the clock in the fourth quarter, so I don't have any doubt or, or quit in my mind. Whatever the score is, you know, I'm gonna keep fighting to the end. We got a gritty group that just, they're gonna play to the final seconds of the game, and that's what you saw. Tucker Kraft breaks a tackle to the 10, to the 5, touchdown! It's a ball game at Lambeau Field! We started off in a hole last year as well, so just learn from it and keep going. But it's definitely a long season, and uh, I definitely like where we're at as a team. The playmakers we have and the you know team we have, I definitely like where we're at. If you're looking for something to build on from the loss to the Vikings, how about the comeback that fell just short in Quay Walker's best game of the season? So much of good defense starts with relentless pursuit. Here comes Quay on the blitz. Now the Vikings have a screen pass called, which is the perfect call for dealing with a blitz. And now look how far Quay, who's in the Viking backfield, is from Aaron Jones, the receiver on the screen. And we all know Aaron can move, but watch Quay. He just starts running, Devontae Wyatt as well. But Quay starts running, keeps running, and keeps running until he gets home to make the play. That was relentless. Now it's third and one for the Vikings and the Packers have their short yardage people on the field. And basically it's Quay's job to make the tackle. Kenny Clark and Lucas Van Ness doing a real nice job in front of them. And Quay, he's got to deal with two things. Number one, the Vikings have a blocker for him. As a matter of fact, he's their best blocker. And number two, while having a feel for him, he's got to maintain vision on the ball carrier. It's like he needs chameleon eyes. Well, somehow, some way Quay manages that. He slips underneath the blocker, keeps his eyes on the ball carrier, and then smacks him dead in his tracks. The Vikings gain nothing, and they are punting. Now the Packers are in their base 4-3, and the Vikings are running a simple fullback lead play right at them, just plain vanilla football. Now Kenny Clark does a terrific job up front of eating up blockers. And here's Quay, and it's Aaron Jones with the football, and Quay has to be ready for anything his cut outside or his cut inside. It's coming inside, Quay is ready, and he stops them for a two-yard gain. The Vikings came in averaging 4.8 a carry. Against the Packers, they averaged 3.5. Pass rush now, and the Packers are running a blitz with Quay combined with a stunt by Devontae Wyatt. Watch Quay, because his technique is textbook. Watch him use his hands. And by doing that right there, 
he's making that left guard useless. He can't block Quay because Quay is basically by him. And he can't block Devante because Quay is picking him. And that forces Aaron Jones into a no-win situation. He blocks Devante, Quay comes free and scores the sack. The Viking game is history. Learn from it and where you can, build on it. I think it just comes down to what's in you. Being down that much, I think it's just going to test your character and just to see where you at, what type of person you are. Pretty much just a gut check time, just to see what you're made of. Darnold under pressure, a sack! Play Walker on the blitz! There were three outstanding catches I thought that he made in that game. One being the touchdown, then there was another one late in the game where he was uncovered and Jordan sped it up and got him the football. And it was a little behind him, but Jaden made a hell of a catch. And then the last big play was where Jordan just gave him a, a chance to go up and get it and, and he beat Harrison for the ball. He's a tone setter, he really is. And I love how he competes and how he prepares for each and every battle and given the opportunities in games, he's making big time plays. Reed showing off the speed, he could go and he will. Jaden Reed, electric. On Sunday, Jaden Reed eclipsed the 1,000 yard mark for his career. The former second rounder already has 20 career catches of 20 plus yards. Tied for the league lead in that category this season. And Green Bay's got another playmaker on defense. Xavier McKinney's four straight games with a pick matches the longest streak in team history. Intercepted! McKinney does it again! And his new defensive coordinator will be the first to tell you it's no accident. He sees it so fast and he reacts so fast. Like when you watch X and you freeze it and you like watch it in really slow motion, he's breaking before the hand's coming off the ball. Like that's how well he anticipates stuff. And it's not just the ability, because he studies it too now. Like that guy watches a lot of tape. So that's what you get when you're that talented and you work that hard and you get on the field, it's not luck. It's his preparation, his mental opportunity. And like I said last week, I'm just really glad he's here. We're essentially a quarter of the way through the season and the Vikings find themselves alone atop the NFC North thanks to Sunday's win in Green Bay. They head across the pond this Sunday to take on the Jets while the Bears host the Panthers and the Lions hit the early bye. The Packers take on the Rams in Week 5, a team Matt LaFleur has not lost to since he's been at the helm in Green Bay. The four-game win streak started in the 2020 postseason right here at Lambeau Field. Down the middle, Lazard's got it, and he's gone! Touchdown! Here's the snap, he steps up under pressure, he's sacked! The D-Train makes its statement on way to the NFC Championship. Stafford, tight pocket, hit as he throws left side, yes! it's intercepted! Down yes! the right sideline, to the house, touchdown, Green Bay, and a third quarter dagger! Green Bay looking to keep hope alive, making a run for the postseason. And he takes hands off to A.J. Dillon, busting his way inside the five, there to the goal line, and he piles up into the football. north end zone. Here's the handoff, Dillon follows Lazard, right side, to the end zone, touchdown! Orbit routes to the left, fake the pass to Jones, swing it over the middle, Musgrave, 10, the end zone, touchdown! Look left, look right, then throw over the middle, the Rams had no chance. Four straight wins, all at home. Now we see if the Packers can cook up a fifth straight over L.A. in their first road game of the series since 2018. We'll have more on the matchup as we roll through the week on Packers Daily. You guys are way up there statistically in yards uh, offensively this year. You're coming off a lot of points last week. What are you feeling about the offense as you go out to a game where, uh, you know, points and yards might be a big factor? Uh, man, I don't really think about that. Um, you know, I know what, what type of people we got around here um, on the offense. You know, I know we come out to work every week. Um, 
So um, there's really no thinking in that in that area. You're one of those guys that's a key player on this team. <coughs> Christian's going to be out for a little while, obviously. Um, what about your individual opportunity now? Is it greater without Christian? I mean, it's just next man up, chance to step up. Um, you know, I, I got a bigger role, but, you know, it's just a chance to step up and make some plays while Christian out here until he get back. Um, that's really it. Just next man up. Uh, the coach was asked about you today. He said, you specifically, he said in the last game there was some good, some, you know, some stuff you want to work on. How do you t process the last game and how does it motivate you going forward? I mean, just like everybody else here, you know, I, I had some drops, you know, I had some good catches. Um, really think of, try to critique myself on those bad plays um, and seeing what was the reason of them. Um, you know, and it's really nothing for real. Um, the drops really just taking my eyes off the ball before I, you know, finish the catch. That's really it. So it's really nothing I need to change. Um, stay the same, keep the same routine. Um, you know, I just be me. Tam, sorry if you talked about this, but in my limited exposure to you, you seem to be pretty hard on yourself generally. Mm -hmm. So you take more of the good from the game, or did you take more of where you were tough on yourself for things that weren't so good? Man, uh, we ain't come out with a win, uh, so it's really like, like I just said, critiquing the bad things. You know, the good going. They're going to always make you feel good, but, you know, you got to critique the bad things if you want to, you know, execute, you know, the, to the fullest, um, you know, and be your best. Um, you got to, you know, you got to execute. Um, to, and to execute, you got to critique those mistakes you make. Um, and most of my mistakes was just taking my eyes off the ball, dropping the ball. Um, so that's really what it, that's all, you know, just thinking about the bad things, you know, the good things. They gonna come, um, but when you critique, you know the things that you didn't do well. Um, that's that's what make you a better player. Yeah, how did you feel about how you did finish the game up with still ending up with two touchdowns? I mean, it's a good feeling to, you know, when coach come back to you, um, when you know coach believe in you, and he coming back to you. Um, it felt great to, you know, get a team, help the team, and give us a chance. Um, you know, with two touchdowns in, in the end, but um, you ain't come out with the win, so it's really. I know you wouldn't throw anybody on the bus, but the whole execution from the snap hole and everything seems to be okay. Yeah, they do a fantastic job. Yep, that's all on me. What's the time between then and now? Then before you forget about it, move on, and, and learn from it. So, you know, obviously you can't fully forget about it. You need to make sure that you analyze it and you figure out what you've done wrong, and um, you know, and try to fix it. But at the same time, clear your head and realize that I'm so much better than that, um, and, and that I just need to get to a point where I can't let it happen again. I mean, it's it's similar to golf. Like it's not a it's not a double miss. Like they've all been in a very very similar spot. Um, so there's a positive to that, obviously, and um, you know I need to try to take that positive, correct it, and then uh, and then move on to the next kick. And I'm sure you really want to get to the next opportunity, but you got to tell yourself to do the work during the week and get everything taken care of there. I'm I'm just so much more excited about getting out to practice than I am even for this weekend. Like I'm thinking about this one kick at a time, starting with practice. Um, don't get me wrong, ecstatic and excited for to go down to LA and. Uh, and play them, but um, at the same time, I'm just so much more excited to get out to practice like today and, and tomorrow and the next day and just really hone in on my craft um, and, you know, do everything that I can during the week to try to prepare myself better for next Sunday. Do you think the wind played any role Sunday at all? I know it was pretty gusty. Yeah, no, it was definitely really windy. Um, you know, the first miss is totally, you know, just a miss on me. Second one, I was aimed a little bit right, trying to account for the wind, um, and it kind of stayed right there. And that, I got to live with that. That you know, I can't go back and change that. But uh, you know, I got to learn from it, right? So um, you know, hindsight, next time I would aim a little bit more inside the uprights than I did, and uh, you know, just just go on from there. I know you see. Not a true dome because it's got some open air to it, but so far it's pretty kicker friendly. I would think. Yeah, I mean, I've never been there, so. Um, Maybe you can speak on it better than me. I've, I've never been there, but uh, but thoroughly excited to get out there and, 
and to you know get on the grass again. You talk about having to let it go, but the next time you get an opportunity to get, how do you not put more pressure on yourself and kind of look over your shoulders, so to speak? I mean, in my opinion, I have felt what rock bottom feels like in a game. Like, I've felt that. So I'm kind of at the point right now where it's almost like a screw it, you know what I mean, mentality. Like, I'm a dog, I'm, I'm that guy, I'm going to go out there and, and bang the kick, right? And that's kind of how I'm thinking about it this week, just continuously telling myself positive feedback and just go out there and it's a game, have fun with it. Um, a lot of people put a lot of time into this game, and um, me included, but at the end of the day, I'm going to go out there and, and own it and be confident this week, and I'm going to go out there and, and perform. He's feeling fine. Um, yeah, body in, in general, you know, it's typical post-game soreness. Um, you know, took a couple of hits, things like that. So, but uh, three days later, yeah, my body's feeling better. Being able to go out there and get contorted different ways, twist away from a sack at one point in the second half, does that give you confidence you can do whatever you need to do and more confidence you had from just practice? Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, I think that was the, the big test going into the game is, uh, you know, how I'd respond to getting hit, um, things like that. So uh, definitely gives me more confidence. And, um, you know, I know going into the game that, um, you know, it's, it's, it's football. I'm going to get hit at some point. So, uh, you know, just want to see how I respond. And, uh, yeah. Jordan, Matt, Matt said about six times now you don't want to throw 50 passes in a game. But one thing he did say was it was good for you to maybe knock off the rust to get that many throws. Is that, do you feel that same way? Do you feel a lot more like yourself with that many throws in a game or, or no? Yeah, no. Um, you know, I think he's right. You know, I think uh, the biggest thing for me getting back was just continuing to get, you know, reps, getting the, the, the throws back down and uh, the timing of everything. So, uh, yeah, definitely I feel like as the game went on, um, you know, I, I started improving, um, getting back more comfortable with the timing and uh, ball placement, things like that. So, uh, yeah, I mean, getting all those reps and all those throws definitely, I think, uh, helped and will help me going forward. Were you able to step into it as much as you'd like or did that improve as maybe the game went on as far as you able to lead into that side? Yeah, no, I, I think that's not uh, as much of a problem. Um, you know, I think uh, just being in the pocket in general, um, being able to get a feel for, you know, sometimes you can't step into some throws. So um, I don't think that was as much of a problem. I think it uh, more of just arm angles and, uh, you know, the depth of, of routes and, and getting the ball there. But I don't think it had much to do with being able to step in and, and not confident with that. When you watch the first, I don't know, couple series of yourself and then watch the last couple series of yourself, could you see differences in just how you were playing, how you were moving? I think you were at all tentative in the beginning. Or how, how do you think? Uh, was there any difference in the beginning to the end? Yeah, I mean, I think at the beginning, I think, uh, like I said before, just kind of the ball placement um, and where I was, you know, where, where some of those uh, balls were landing in terms of where the receiver was at um, was disappointing and uh, something that I th definitely think as the game went on, I, I started getting a better feel of uh, where I need to put it. Um, but like Rob said, I think it just comes to, to pushing off that back foot, things like that, um, and just being comfortable in the pocket. But, um, you know, I think uh, it, it all comes down to just not getting some of those reps for two weeks um, and, and trying to get back out there and ha haven't had that timing of throwing to live guys. You know, I've been throwing to a lot of stationary routes, things like that. So just getting that feel of where I need to be putting the ball, things like that. How resilient is Don Tavian? I, I, you went back to him for some big throws right after some that did go your way. Yeah, I think I think he's he's very resilient. I mean, I think he has that mindset that uh, you know he wants the ball, and uh, you know if he, he makes a mistake early on, I think he's gonna uh, be hard on himself about it, and uh, you know find a way to fix it and uh, keep going. But I think that's everybody on this team. You know, what I mean, nobody's gonna give up or um, you know be have the game kind of be defeated um, after having you know one bad play. You know, I think we all got to be able to bounce back and uh, respond. But I feel like Aaron would sometimes go to a guy as soon as he could after maybe a drop. Is that something you think is important? Can, can you do that as a quarterback, or does it just have to sort of happen organically? Yeah, I definitely think it just has to happen organically. Um, you know, it's not really uh, something that was on my mind. You know, if a guy drops a pass, like trying to get back to him immediately, I think, you know, you just got to stay true to your progressions and uh, read it out, take what the defense gives you. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's one of those things you're not – you know, you don't lose confidence in the guy if they have a drop. You know, you're going to keep going back to him. But uh, definitely, I don't think I'm trying to, you know, look for them after that. As someone who grew up in California, how, how much does it mean to you to, to play in, in L.A.? I know you've been to Santa Clara. Yeah, no, it'll be fun. Um, I'm excited about it. My first time playing 
uh, in SoFi. So I'm um, excited to go back home and obviously the closest game uh, back home in Bakersfield. So I have a lot of family and friends there and uh, be excited to be able to play in front of them. We've all seen games where the stats get kind of skewed because of the score. Um, so how do you look at your 200 yards in the fourth quarter? Is that like real production that's like building block stuff, you think? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, a lot of it is the situation we put ourselves in. Um, you know, in the first half being down 28-0, to zero, things like that, uh, where, you know, we're trying to climb back into the game, fight back, and uh, we're going to be passing it a lot. So, um, you know, I think we did some really good things in the second half, and uh, we were able to put ourselves in position to have a chance to come back. Um, but it was a little too little too late, you know. I mean, we didn't do enough in the first half, and um, you know the stats are what the stats are. But uh, you know, I think it was the situation we put ourselves in to be thrown at that much. That said, when you, if you're ever finding yourself in a hole that big again, is there value in what you were able to do to, to dig out of it that you can store as, hey, hey, we did this before, and we could do it again and finish it? Yeah, like I said, you never want to put yourself in that position. But uh, you know, I'm confident that um, you know we have such a good offense that uh, we can we can definitely climb out of that hole. And, uh, you know, the passing attack we have, I mean, O-line did a great job protection, give me that time. But uh, we got some dudes on the outside. We can go make plays and, uh, you know, have a real explosive offense. So, um, like I said, you never want to put yourself in that position. But, uh, you know, I think the, the game we played Sunday, you know, defense did a great job in the second half. You know, we get us the ball back uh, quickly and uh, as much as they did. And then um, a couple drives, we, we, we stall it out. But uh, to be able to go down there and score quickly um, definitely give us confidence um, ever being down again. Uh, I, don't, I know you don't want to get need right on the spot, you know, on, on your knee like it happened, and I think you got stepped on at one point to, uh, on the left right. But does that, to some degree, clear, 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 clear your head like, okay, I took two pretty good shots or two instances where they were. Yeah, I mean, I'd definitely rather not get hit on the leg for sure. Um, but like I said before, that's one of those things, uh, the question marks going into the game, you know, how, how would it feel getting hit, you know, getting twisted, things like that. Um, and, you know, I think uh, I came out of the game fine. And uh, obviously it's going to be a little sore from taking hits and whatnot. But um, you know, I'm definitely, uh, you know, I like where uh, my knee's at coming out of the game. And uh, yeah, like you said, it'll give me some confidence going forward. But, um, yeah, try, try and limit those hits as much as possible for sure. James give you as a quarterback in terms of his talent and productivity, and then what does he give you in terms of his energy? Like after that touchdown at the end of the half, I mean, he did everything he could to get all 78,000 people going, right? Yeah, I mean, he's a spark plug. He, he's definitely got a lot of energy, but um, I mean, the biggest thing about Jay Reed is uh, just his mindset. You know, he always wants the ball. When the ball's in the air, he's going to go get it. You know, he has some big time plays there in the late in the game. I mean, even his touchdown, like. The ball's hanging up there. He's going to go up and get it. Um, and uh, he's got that dog mindset. And, uh, you know, every it seems like every time he touches the ball, you know, big plays happen. Um, he's an explosive runner. Once he gets it, he can make people miss. And, um, you know, good things happen. So definitely going to look, try and keep getting him the ball. But, uh, you know, he's been doing some really good things so far this season. And uh, I think it's just carrying over from what he did last year at the end of the year. But, uh, you know, he's, he's definitely a spark plug. When did you start to feel like the connectivity with him was really starting to take off? I mean, obviously, he led you guys to some mm -hmm. like new, but mm -hmm. Was there a point where you could really feel it starting to really click more? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think early on in uh, OTA's training camp, uh, there was a lot of plays where we'd be, uh, we just weren't on the same page yet. And you could tell um, whether it was just a slightly off missing or uh, just not on the same page where, uh, you know, he might break in and I'm thinking he's going to break out, things like that, where it's option routes. But um, the more reps we got, I mean, you could see it. Um, early on in the season where we were just trying to get him the ball, whether it's uh, end of rounds, um, you know, setting plays up where he's a number one target. Um, and I think he, he kind of just took it and ran with it. And he, he, he embraced that role and just kept getting better with it. But, uh, you know, I think it's credit to a lot of the work he's put in. Um, you know, like I said, you know, we weren't on the same page early on and we just kept kept talking through some things and uh, we'd work after practice, things like that. He came to California, we put in a lot of work. So it's definitely a testament to how much he works. But uh, yeah, I mean, he, I think he's just going to keep getting better. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I love trying to find him out there because he, when he get, when he touches the ball, you know, you always think a, a big play is going to happen for From sure. From a quarterback's perspective, what's it like going against X? You did it all training camp long, but now we've seen other quarterbacks go against McKinney. And he, who, he's who? Oh, McKinney. X? Uh, is it different than going against just a traditional safety? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, the best thing about X is, I mean, when the ball's in the air, he's going to make a play. Like, there are so many players in training camp where, whether it was a tip, an overthrow, 
um, he just finds himself around the ball. He's in the right spot all the time, and uh, he makes the plays when the ball's in the air. You know, you don't see him dropping a lot of those plays. So, um, you know, I think he's really good safety. He knows where he needs to be um, in our defense, and, uh, you know, he's a really good leader as well. But, um, I mean, the guy's just got great ball skills, you know, and, uh, you know, he baits guys into throws, things like that. He, he's good at reading the quarterback and um, kind of just reading the concept too. But um, I can't tell you how good his ball skills are just when the ball's in the air. Jordan, what, what have you thought of what Emmanuel has given you? You know, after that big run he had last preseason, he didn't get many opportunities, but it's kind of gotten more obviously with the injuries. Do, do you think he can really play a big role for you guys going forward? Definitely. Um, you know, he's stepped up so much. You know, like you said, started with preseason last year and just showing what he can do. And, uh, you know, he, he's made the most of the ops he's got for sure. And, uh, you know, now he finds himself getting a, a lot of carries. Um, you know, being right behind Josh. So um, I think he's going to keep keep improving, keep doing what he can do and just building everything, um, building every day and giving the coaches confidence and the players confidence in him. But, um, you know, he, he's taking advantage of the opportunities he's got. Maybe you were too focused, Jordan, on the interception at the moment, but what did you think when you saw Christian go down? And then as a follow-up, how do you guys, I realize he's not getting 10 catches a game, but how do you overcome his absence here this weekend? Yeah, it was tough. Um, you know, it was uh, one of those throws. I saw it when it happened. It, it, it just it didn't look good. Um, and, you know, I was definitely upset that, you know, I put him in that position to get hit. Um, so it's tough. But, uh, you know, I, he'll, he'll bounce back. He'll be back for sure. Uh, but, yeah, you know, I went right over after. And, uh, you know, I think we were all praying that it wasn't something, you know, very serious. And uh, glad it's just uh, ankle and uh, nothing, nothing too serious. So he'll be back. But, uh, yeah, you know, it, it sucks. But, um, you know, it's that, it's that mindset, next man up. You know, we got a, a deep receiver room, and, um, you know, a lot of those guys have had uh, tons of reps and game experience. So, um, you know, I'm confident that they'll be, they'll be ready. Jordan, St Stafford, Stafford's been doing this for a long time. I'm just curious if you recall, like, the first time you ever watched him play or yeah, any, any memories of just watching him when, when you were younger. Yeah, definitely. I remember, you know, watching Matt when he was back on the Lions. Um, you know, I don't remember exactly the first time I watched him, but, um, he's one of those quarterbacks. Who's, he's been doing it a, a long time at a high level. Um, so I definitely love watching him, uh, you know, break down his tape, his film, things like that. And um, I mean, talk about a guy that can do a lot of things with eye manipulation, no look passes, put the ball in the money. I mean, he's one of the most accurate quarterbacks in the game. So, uh, you know, I got a lot of respect for him and uh, actually, you know, met him this offseason. So it was very cool to be able to talk to him, kind of pick his brain um, with different things, but uh, definitely got a lot of respect for him. Jordan, for the situation, you must always take all the number one backs, right? Oh, sorry, say it again. In a, in a normal situation before you're hurt, you almost always take all the number one reps. Right? Mm -hmm, yep. Are you back in that situation yet, or are you trying to be smart with how, how much you back in those yeah, and no, I'm back, you know, taking all those reps, um, things like that, and, you know, kind of building myself back into that role. But, uh, yeah, you know, as a starter, you want to definitely try and get as many reps as possible and just feel comfortable with everything. Uh, so, yeah. Jordan, you just kind of talked about trying to build yourself back up. You know, in the last game, you did a lot more, you know, in the pocket and wouldn't try to run as much. As games go, go on, do you feel like you'll be able to incorporate that more, maybe even this Sunday, or are you still trying to get a feel for it? Yeah, no, I think we will. Um, you know, I think we got to be smart about it. But, uh, you know, it's one of those things I, I'll base it day to day on how I feel, how I feel at practice, um, running. But I think we'll, you know, like I said, last week was a was a you know good confidence boost. And I was moving around good, getting out of the pocket a couple of times, scrambling, things like that. And um, everything felt fine. So I think we'll we'll definitely keep building that stuff up. What did you see from their defense? They were pretty, they've been pretty vulnerable so far. No, I mean, they, they got a good defense. I mean, it's it's something that we are familiar with. Um, the, the style of defense is, you know, what our defense has ran the past couple of years. And, um, you know, I feel like we've played them every year, you know, since I've been here, it feels like. So um, we've seen them a lot. And, uh, you know, we'll go through the week and, and, and put a good good plan together. But, uh, you know, they got some good guys on defense. And uh, you know, I think we'll, we'll be able to put put a good game plan together and be able to take advantage of some of the stuff they do. But uh, it's, it's definitely a defense we're familiar with. Hey everybody, you may think it's the Three Stooges, but we like to think it's three guys with three things. And Mike Spofford, what is thing number one? Well, Larry, we have seen the difference the last couple of weeks between when the Packers get off to a fast start and when they don't and how differently these games can go. So here it is with the Week 5 opponent, the Los Angeles Rams. They have been outscored 58 to 19 in the first half so far this season. They are not a fast starting team. It is a big reason they are only one and three. The Packers need to get these guys down early and keep them down.
And Weston, what is thing number two? It sounds like the Packers once again averted disaster with an injury. In this case, Christian Watson, an ugly looking affair on Sunday, but Packers are hoping that they avoided a bullet there. Either way, for the Green Bay Packers, whether number nine is in the lineup or not, they have been an extremely explosive offense so far this season. Depending on how you score it, 16 plus yards for reception, 12 plus yards for a run. They've done that 40 times this year so far, which actually leads the National Football League. The Green Bay Packers have the firepower to withstand not having number nine Christian Watson on the field, but if they get him back here sooner than later, that's also a huge positive. Gentlemen, thing number three is Sean Ryan. Now, with Jordan Morgan being sidelined, Sean has gotten the opportunity to be the man at right guard, and he has taken advantage of that opportunity. In pass pro, he's been a very, very high percentage guy. And in the running game, and I can really appreciate this, his guy ends up on the ground <laughs> a high percentage of the time. Yeah. Sean Ryan playing good football, taking advantage of his opportunity. And that's three guys with three things. See you next time. L.A. Rams back in La La Land for week five. They get the Green Bay Packers who hope love just needed some time to warm up. Anyone married for 10 plus years will tell you it can take some time to get going. 29 yard pickup through the air by the scrambling love. Jordan Love comes in off a crazy outing. He threw three INTs last week. Intercepted the third interception of Jordan Love today. Also threw for 389 yards, four touchdowns. Green Bay put up 22 points in the fourth quarter. Just came up a bit short. LA defense he takes on this week has not played the pass great in 2024. Eight touchdowns allowed, just one INT, a rating over 120 given up, over nine yards per attempt. None of that's good. They didn't give up a lot of yards to Caleb Williams last week, but they let him put up his first 100-plus rate of his career. Williams to the block in the end zone for DJ Moore. How bothersome will LA's front be to love? Only sacked once, hit 10 times in week four, but he threw 54 times too. He's not usually easy to bother. LA's pass rush, seven sacks on the year, a little low, but comes off a three-sack outing, just 23 pass attempts too. Williams gets eaten alive by Quinton Lake. LA's corners didn't struggle with any wideouts last week faced a good trio too now they get the ever-changing green bay passing attack it could be anyone week to week christian watson got hurt versus minnesota so track that romeo dobbs went for 39 yards dontavian wicks led the team in targets with 13 two scores 78 yards to the end zone caught Touchdown, and if you want to maybe dub someone their WR1, it might be Jaden Reed. Comes in off a 139-yard performance and score. Perfectly thrown ball from Jordan Love to Jaden Reed. Running back Josh Jacobs hauled in 27 receiving yards as well. 51 rush yards, 5.7 a carry, but only nine attempts due to the flow of the game. Jacobs, gain of nine. Maybe he factors more this week. LA gave up 93 yards to DeAndre Swift on 5.8 a run last week. And prior to that, he couldn't hit the broadside of a barn, symbolically speaking. Swift gets going. The run game, pretty important to LA's offense. It kept them in it last week. Kyron Williams, 94 yards, 4.9 a carry, TD. A seventh straight game with a touchdown for Kyron Williams, the longest oh, streak in the NFL. Go. Green Bay defense he takes on gave up similar digits to Aaron Jones, 93 yards, 4.2 a run. Aaron Jones slashing his way past the 40. Packers defense giving up 31 to Minnesota, though your quarterback throwing three INTs is a factor. Still, Matthew Stafford facing a defense that let Sam Darnold hang three TDs on him, 123.4 rating, 275 yards. Completion for Darnold. Green Bay pass rush with a couple sacks. They did pick off Darnold, but they gave up 70 yards and a touchdown to Jordan Addison, 85 yards and a TD to Justin Jefferson. Cornerback Eric Stokes giving up 87 yards. Cornerback Corey Valentine, 56 yards and a TD. It really hurt they didn't have star corner Jair Alexander. What touchdown! Jordan Addison! And he was working on Corey Valentine.
They line up against Matthew Stafford this week. No Cooper Nakua. He went 20 for 29 versus a tough Chicago D. Those windows are getting smaller and smaller. No touchdowns, one interception, sacked three times. He's having to try and do it with backups all around him. 2-2 Atwell, one of them, sort of. He's LA's top pass-catching threat at this stage. 82 yards versus Chicago. 2-2 Atwell finding the space for a long game. Packers and the Rams have been around for a while. Pretty even, too. Green Bay up 50-47 to over L.A. overall. They have beat the Rams four straight and nine out of the last ten, though. 1965, this is the good stuff. Rams lose to the eventual champs in a track meet. 6-3 to the final.